Hello everyone, and welcome to an R tutorial video. And in this video, we're going to start at the very beginning, and we're actually going to go through the process of installing R. So all I've done is I've opened up a fresh instance of Google Chrome. You could do this in any of the internet browsers, or the internet browser of your choice. I just prefer to use Chrome. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up here, and you're going to go to R dash project dot org and you're gonna get to here so that's r dash project dot org and you're gonna get to here so hopefully <laughs> your screen looks like mine does and you're going to click the download r hyperlink in the first paragraph so this is going to take you to a list of crayon mirrors it doesn't really matter which crayon mirror you pick I would recommend picking the one closest geographically to where you live. So I always prefer to go down here and pick the one from University of Michigan. So when you click that, it doesn't, again, does not matter which one you click, it will take you to this landing page here. So this is going to be where you pick which type of R, or sorry, which type of machine you want to download R for. Now, because I have a Windows machine, I'm going to be showing you the steps for Windows. Um, I've never downloaded R on a Linux machine, and I'm pretty sure it looks the same for a Mac. But anyway, we're going to go through the steps for downloading for Windows. Um, so you're going to click Download R for Windows, and it's going to take you to this page here with all the different subdirectories. So I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video that you've never downloaded R before, and that you're going to want to download what's called the base set or the base distribution. So you can either click where it says base, or you can click here where it says install R for the first time. So now you're gonna get here where it's going to give you the options of what to download, and you're always gonna to wanna to pick the big, bold download R. Now at the time of this video, we are on version 4.0.2, but your R version may be slightly different depending on when you watch it. But you're going to want to pick Download R, and then it'll have some combination of three numbers here designating the version. So you're just going to click this. And then it'll ask you where you want to save the, the installation um, file. I would recommend putting it in your downloads and clicking Save. You do not want to change the name of the file. So you're going to click Save, and then it'll take a minute to download. Um, assuming that you do this all in one session, and you're using Chrome, it, the download will appear down here. If you're using Firefox, it should also appear down here. But just in case it doesn't, you can always use File Explorer to, to get to this. So I like to right-click, Show in Folder, and then you'll see the application um, file that you just downloaded, and it should have the same file name as the um, version of R that you're downloading. So if you just double-click this, it will launch the application installer. You will be asked whether or not you want to be allowed to make changes. You always want to click yes. This is a prerequisite for it to do its work. So you're going to see a setup language. Um, I'm going to choose English. You're going to see a set of information about the copyright material, what you can and can't do with R. Um, Basically, R is open source, but they have no, um, they make no guarantees about, about uh, the end products. So if you click next, you'll see that it's going to put it in a default location. I would almost guarantee that you're going to want to keep the default location. You're not going to want to change this unless you know for sure what you're doing. So just click next. Then you're going to have to select what components you want to install. Again, assuming that you've never installed R before, you're going to want to install all of these as they all are required for R to function. So you're going to click Next. Again, I would recommend accepting the defaults here. I would recommend accepting the default here because this is going to control where it will appear when you go through your Start menu. And just keeping it in an R folder makes it easy to find later when you need to use it. So click Next. Um, here, if you would like, I like to create a desktop shortcut, but that's just me. You don't have to do this. This is just giving you um, the opportunity to be able to have something on your desktop that you can double click. Both of these should be checked. 
and if you click next then it will take a minute and it will go through and it will actually extract all the files and put them on your computer for you. Okay, once that's finished running, you will see this pop up saying that you have successfully installed whatever version of R you're trying to install. If you click finish, you will be completed with the installation. If you would like to run R, there are two different ways you can do that. The first would be if you made a desktop shortcut, you could double click the desktop shortcut. But assuming that you didn't, you would go here, you would type in R, and for some reason it's not showing up on my best matches, um, but if you go in here, You will see, if you scroll down to the R's, you will see where it says an R folder has been created. If you click this and open, you'll see that I have multiple versions of R installed, but you would want to click the most recent one, and you want to click the times 64. So this is actually really important. Um, there's two versions of R that get installed. There's the I386 and the 64. You want the 64 because this is the 64-bit version of R. You would just click it and then it will open up your R console for you to use R um, as you normally would. So hopefully that was pretty straightforward. If you have any questions or you get stuck trying to follow along, I encourage you to pause the video. I encourage you to go back and re-watch any parts you got stuck on. And as always, please reach out. Thank you.